So, well, back to the strike by junior doctors in England now as they begin a three-day walkout in the ongoing dispute over pay. Let's talk more on this with Dr. Rob Lawrenson, who's a junior doctor and co-chair of the BMA Junior Doctors Committee. And, and Rob, thanks for coming into the studio. Just remind us, why are you striking today? Yeah, good morning, Jane. So, junior doctors have lost 26.1% of their pay over the last 15 years, and the government are signalling that they're going to cut our pay further which is really difficult to stomach, given particularly everything that we went through just recently through COVID and uh, what we're living through now in the cost of living crisis. But the, the, the pay hasn't been cut 20, you know, no doctor has, has, has lost 26,000 pounds. Doctors, you know, 10 years ago will be on a different salary to, to what they were then. They will have moved through the ranks. You're talking about an equivalence that the people in all sectors have, have had to suffer. So we're comparing doctors of the same uh, uh, rank, if you like to say, with themselves back in 2008. And, and our argument is that no doctor is worth less than what they would have been worth in 2008. And you're quite right in saying that wages have stagnated for an awful lot of people over the last 10, 15 years. But doctors have lost over a quarter of their pay packet in real terms. And they're some of the worst affected members of society. You say that, but there will be people who will say, well, what about nurses? They are paid a great deal less than junior doctors. They have, have gone into negotiations with the government and asked for a 10% rise, which was seen as being very, very hefty. The, the kind of rises that you're talking about, a lot of people would say, you know, 36% is just unrealistic. So uh, nurses have lost 20% in real terms, and they're struggling just as much. And I think it's really important that nurses get a good deal for their members as well. It, really important because doctors need nurses and nurses need doctors. You know, this is an issue that's affecting many professions, as I say, and we're seeing it play out in, in loads of, uh, of different ways in healthcare. And when you say sort of a, a 36 percent demand being very high it, it does sound quite high but actually if you put it down into monetary terms doctors are starting on about 14 pounds an hour this pay restoration it, it is equivalent to about five pound an hour increase so paying a doctor after five years of medical school 19 pounds an hour is not going to break the bank but they don't stay on 14 pounds an hour for, for, for a great length of time. An average junior doctor over that sort of 10 year span that most people are junior doctors is on about 46,000 pounds. So our pay range uh, starts at 14 pounds an hour. And after 10 years of practice, you know, seriously skilled and educated and talented people who've gone through many uh, expensive exams, achieving many difficult competencies over their careers. So for example, neurosurgeons operating uh, on people's brains in the middle of night, they can be earning about 28 pounds an hour on a, on a their basic hourly rate. And our basic hours are quite shocking. Our, our basic hours range from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. That's what's called a, a basic hour for us. They are long days, isn't it? No one's doubting, certainly, that how hard junior doctors work or indeed how, how deserving that they are. I, I think the argument is that, that the demands you're placing, the government would suggest, are unrealistic, and also that you don't seem willing to get around the table and actually talk to the government. We have a letter from Steve Barclay. He's made it really clear that he wants to sit down and talk to, to you guys. Why are you not going in and talking to him? Why are you still striking when the government has made it really clear they're happy to talk? So again, going back to those figures, a, a five to ten pound an hour ask is just restoring our pay back to 2008. So a doctor starting on 19 pounds an hour or 38 pounds an hour, it, it's really not much when you think about the skills that these people have. Mm. And when Steve Barclay talks about um, not meeting, you know, we, we wrote to him back in August, seven months ago. And the first time I met him was on the 2nd of March. And what I don't quite understand is on the 24th of February, after our ballot result, a resounding mm. result, which showed 98% of doctors wanted to take the strike action, yeah. we announced our dates on the 24th of February. And then on the 2nd of March, we met. He told us he didn't have a mandate and had to go back to the Prime Minister. But we've got now from the 11th, saying, he, you know, saying he def he, he's willing to talk. Could you not have, to have talked well, to him on the 11th, on the 12th, on the 13th? So he's not willing to talk. That's the problem. 
But now you're, you seem not willing to talk. You know, he's, he has, with great respect, made this letter very, very clear that he's willing to talk, and it's dated the 11th of March. We're very yeah. happy to talk. As I say, August we wrote to him, October we wrote to him, November we met with the Department of Health and Social Care, and they told us, until you've got a ballot, until you've got a result, there's no point talking. We've had our ballot, we've mm -hmm. had our result. So and why not in fact, talk? we met with him on the 2nd of March and we were having a talk and then he told us he didn't have a mandate. He came back to us Friday night. He sent me an email at 9.49 p.m. asking us to talk when we'd had a meeting with his civil servants earlier that day, which he didn't turn up to. We've gone to many meetings and he's only turned up to one. So for him to come out and say that we're not coming to the table is frankly disingenuous. Okay, Dr. Rob Lawrence, I'm Jeannie Doctor and co-chair of the BMA Jeannie Doctor Committee. Thank you very much. Thank you.